Hey everyone, my name is Abhishek and today we are going to create this minimal responsive UI animation in After Effects. And all the elements on the screen are completely responsive. So as my mouse is moving, you can see all these styles are changing their scale. And this is done entirely using After Effects. No third party plugin, no keyframes, nothing. So let's see how to make this. Alright, so I'm in After Effects and here you can see we have this mouse. So if I click and just simply move this mouse, you can see it will interact with these styles and you can see they are changing their size as I'm moving them. So this is done without any keyframes. We are going to use some basic expressions and I'm going to show you how you can make these kind of animations in After Effects. So let's begin. So first we will begin by creating a new composition. Let's call this one main, but the height will be 1920 by 1080 frame rate. You can pick like 30 FPS and duration. You can pick whatever you want. Just click on OK. Now let's create a background. So right click new. Let's add a solid. Just make it whatever color you want. Let's add some nice color by adding four color gradient. Drag it over here. Just change the colors. So now I have changed the colors. Let's play with a couple of these points. So I want this to have a little bit of this sort of look. So now we are ready to create our tiles. So for that, let's select the rounded rectangle tool and just simply click and drag and it will create this shape. Now for the fill, we can just leave it to this white color stroke. We can set this to zero. Let's play around with a couple of these properties. Let's search for size and I'm going to let's uncheck this and I'm going to set this to 700 by 850 so that we have this vertical thing. Let's select this. Let's search for roundness. Now, this is just the designing part. We are not going to focus much over here. This is completely up to you can like play around with these angles, these roundness angles and whatever you want. Let's align it in the center. So if you're not able to see the align panel, you can go to windows and from here you can activate it. Now in this tutorial, our main focus is how to create that 3D card sort of look and how to make them interactive with your cursor. So let's make sure that its anchor point is in the center and let's select this and we are ready to add some really nice highlights to them. In order to add the highlights, we can just simply select this, right click, go to layer style and from here enable the bevel and emboss and right away you can see we are able to see some shadows and if I select this let's just change its color to like little bit dark we don't want it to be like much bright there you go now we are able to see the highlights let's play around with these values so let's open this up opacity I'm going to set this to 100 shadow opacity I'm going to set this to 100 as well this color we can change this to white and let's change this to screen as well now you can see we are able to see some very nice highlight edges and we can increase the size by playing with this value if you want if you want to have like more prominent edges also i'm going to increase the softness let's just keep it over here we don't want it we don't want the size to be like this much just play around with it till you find something that looks good so you can see we are able to see some really nice edges and i think this looks good so we're done with our highlight edges now in order to make it more 3d we can add some drop shadows let's search for drop shadow and let's drag it onto this so the first thing is that we can increase the distance and let's increase the softness and let's just increase it a little bit more now you can lower down this opacity depending upon what kind of look you are going for there you go now we have this 3d card i think we can play more with these bevel and emboss so first i'm going to like lower down the size we don't want it to be like this harsh let's keep it over here for this we can probably make it a little bit darker and let's keep on multiply so that we have one edge that is like slightly highlighted and one which is not if i increase the size you can see we are able to see the highlighted edge i want it to be on this side so for that we can play around with the angle so for example we can keep it over here now let's play with the size and let's just lower it down there you go now we have our 3d card so now we are done with our first style and in the same way we can select this press ctrl d to duplicate this let's search for size and this one we can place it over here let's just lower down its height and let's just place it over here now we can select this press ctrl d let's place one over here and on this one let's search for size and we can make this one smaller select this press ctrl d let's search for size and let's move this one to this side so before we continue, if you enjoy my work and you want to support me, then you can check out my Patreon page. Over there, you will get access to the tutorial project files, exclusive templates, and all the other advanced VFX and CGI tutorials that are available only on Patreon. So make sure to check them out. Link for that is in the description. And let's continue. 
Now we are done with our four tiles. Now it's completely up to you. You can add whatever elements you want onto these. So the example that I showed, all of those are like simple PNG images. I'm going to like skip this part. So it's up to you. You can add whatever elements you want. So now I have added all these elements on top of these cards. Again, these are just some PNG images. Like you can see, these are some just JPG images that I have imported. And I also color coded all of these layers so that they match with their respective base. So all of these layers, these shapes are the base layers. And let me just quickly change their color to let's say sand or we can change its color to this color so that we can distinguish between them. Also, I have parented all of these images to their respective card. So if I move the card, you can see all of these images are also being animated. And now we are ready to add our cursor and see how you can create those animated interactive UIs. So for that, we need a cursor. Now it's up to you. You can use a cursor image. You can like draw a cursor using this pen tool as well. So for example, you can draw a very simple triangle like this and you can make this as a cursor. So now we have our cursor. Our next step is to make it interactive. So as we are moving, it will change the scale of these elements. So for that, we are going to first add some slider controller. So let's search for it and let's drag it onto this layer. Now the naming of these slider controllers is very important. So I'm going to select this. Let's press control D because we need four of them. Now I'm going to select this one. Let's press enter and I'm going to call this one max size. So make sure you type the name correctly. It is M A X capital S I Z E and let's type minimum size min S I Z E. Let's select this one. Let's type range. If your spelling is wrong or you have like wrong capital letters, then it won't work. Let's type sensitivity. So here we have our four sliders. Now also I'm going to change the name of my layer. So let's select this. Let's type target T A R G E T. Again, these are like very important if you want your expression to work, otherwise it won't. So now we can select our element, which is this one. We want it to interact. So let's press S and we are going to use this expression. So I will put a link in the description for where you can get this expression and then just simply copy it. Then we can go back and we can select this layer, hold on the Alt key, click on this stopwatch then press Control V to paste it. Now our element will disappear because we have to play around with a couple of these settings. Also, we are not getting any expression errors. That means we have write down our names correctly. Over here, we can play around with a couple of these settings. So first we can change the minimum size. So I want this to be 100, which is the interactive size of this. And if I move it around the max size, we can set this to 110. Now let's play around with the range. Now range basically defines how far you have to be with the cursor in order to interact. So for example, if I set this to 500, now you can see my cursor is over here. Now as soon as it moves, you can see it will start increasing its size. Now the range defines how far you have to be from this in order to interact. So for example, if I set this to let's say 100, now you will notice that if I move my cursor, you can see it is not interacting, but as soon as I come within the range, which is over here, you can see it will start interacting. So if I set this to, let's say 1000, now you can see as soon as my cursor like comes even close to this element, you can see it will start scaling. So you can play around with this however you want. Let's keep it to 500. Now, before I explain sensitivity, let me just simply copy this expression and just paste it onto all the other layers. So we have this one, let's press S, hold on the Alt key, just paste it. Let's select this one, press S, hold on the Alt key and just paste it. Let's select this one S, hold on the Alt key and just paste it. Now we have added the expression onto all of them. So if I select my cursor, you can see as I am moving, all of these elements are like animating. Now let's see what sensitivity does. So if I set this to 100, now all of these elements will become very sensitive. So you can see as soon as I start moving and comes close to my other element, you can see they will start moving like this. But for this example, I'm going to like set this to zero. I want them to animate only when I'm within their range like this. Again, you can play around with the max size. So for example, if I set this to let's say 200, now all of these elements will scale to 200 as soon as I move to their center. But for this one, I'm going to set this to 110. And this is the minimum size. So if I set this to 50, so you can see all of these elements will be 50. And when I move close to them, they will change their size to 110. Otherwise they will stay into this minimum position. But for this one, I'm going to keep, keep them to 100. So there you go. Now we have created our interactive UI and you can also animate them. So if I press P, let's add a keyframe and let's move like a couple of frames ahead. Let's move it to this and let's again move to this element. Let's go over here. Let's move it to this. Let's go over here and just move it to this. Now, if I press play, you can see as our cursor is moving, all of these elements will start animating. 
there you go so in this way you can create these kind of interactive ui animations in after effects and the best use case of these kind of animations is when you have like lot of elements and you want to make it like very interactive because animating them using keyframes would be very tedious and using this technique you can just simply add this expression to all the elements which you want to interact and then just simply animate the mouse wherever you want them to affect. So this is how you can create these kind of interactive UIs and the project files for this tutorial is available on Patreon. So if you're supporting me over there, then you can download it from there. And if you're not, then you might consider it because you will get access to the tutorial project files, exclusive templates, and all the other advanced VFX and CGI tutorials that are available only on Patreon. So make sure to check them out. Link for that is in the description. And with that being said, my name is Abhishek and I'll see you in the next one.